Welcome back. My name's Steve and thank you for joining me on my photography journey. And today is the third video in my Apple Photos editing series. We've already looked at editing on a Mac from the basic adjustments to the more advanced controls when you're editing raw pictures and really playing with that image. But today we're going fully mobile. And whether you're using an iPhone or an iPad, I'll show you how to edit your photos using Apple Photos. And this will include live photos, using the depth control, and even kind of starting on your mobile and then finishing up on your Mac. And yes, you can even edit your DSLR or mirrorless images right from your phone as well. So it's not just for pictures that you've taken from your iPhone. So let's get into it. So first of all, you need to open up your Photos app and find the image that you actually want to work on. And then at the bottom, you've got a settings control. So press onto that. It may need to download the photo if you're not storing the whole file on your phone. So this works for any image. So whether it's an iPhone photo, whether it's a imported JPEG, one that you've downloaded, anything like that, they'll all work in exactly the same way. So you get your usual sets of tools across the bottom. So adjust is where your basic settings are. Then you've got filters, you've got a crop tool, you've even got a cleanup tool now. And when you are editing a picture with some depth in it, so like the portrait photos, you get a blur control. So your depth of field you can adjust as well. So let's start with the adjust tool. So if we scroll through these, you can see there's an auto option to begin with. Then you've got exposure, brilliance, highlights, shadows, contrast, brightness, black point, saturation, vibrance, warmth, tint, sharpness, definition, noise reduction, and finally vignettes. You've got quite a lot of different options in here. So let's start off with exposure. So obviously, if you scroll one way, it makes the image brighter. If you scroll the other way, it makes the image darker. And then if you want to see your adjustments uh, and how they've changed the photo, you can press the icon and it will turn it off. Press the icon and it will turn it back on. So for example, if you lowered your exposure, tapping it will put it back to before you lowered your exposure. Tap it again, we'll put that adjustment that you've made on so you can compare your before and after. And there is a dot um, at the zero point so you can easily get yourself back to where you started. So as you can see, this is a simplified toolkit uh, for use on the mobile or iPad compared to the Mac. The same tools are there. You can still do the same adjustments. They're just a lot easier to use when they're smaller with just a slide with your thumb. So now that we've adjusted our exposure, let's have a look at our highlights and see what we can do with those. So we'll find highlights in here. And then again, we scroll one way and then the other to get it looking how we want it to look. And then the same with our shadows. Let's lighten them up a bit in this picture. There we go, that looks a bit better. So it's nice and straightforward, just sliding backwards and forwards on these sliders to get the effect that you're looking for. And now let's add some vibrance to this and just adjust it one way and the other just to see what looks good. There we go, it's a bit more vibrant now, that looks good. And then we can warm it up or cool it down. So remember, cooling it down makes everything a little bit more blue. Warming it up makes it a bit more orange or yellow. And again, we can press the button to take off our adjustments and again to put it back on so we can see what that adjustment that we've just done is doing to our picture. And as I said before, you should make one adjustment. Look at it. Has it improved your picture? If it has, move on. If not, then that's the point at which you should change it slightly and adjust as you go along, make it look good with every step that you take. And if you want to take off all of your adjustments and have a look at the raw image, all you need to do is press on the image, then you'll see that it goes back to how it was before. It holds it like that for a few seconds and then it goes back to your adjusted image. 
So now let's find a picture that was shot in portrait mode so that we can have a look at that depth control I was talking about. So I've got a selfie here and again we just press that settings button and we can see that we now have this extra control called portrait. So what we do here is we slide our slider. If we move everything to the right then that makes our background blurrier. If we move it to the left then that makes everything more in focus and you can choose the point on which you are actually focusing so at the moment i'm focusing on my face but if i click to the background i can have the background in focus and me out of focus but i might prefer me being in focus to be honest let's just adjust that slightly and there we go so that is kind of looking at about f4.5 or we could go all the way down to f1.4 where I'm really sharp and the background is really blurry. Subtle is always better, I think. So let's go somewhere in the middle. There we go, 4.5. That's not too bad. So now we've got our background blur how we want it. We can also apply a filter. So if you can't be bothered to edit it properly or there's a particular look that you want to go for, click on your filters button and then you can scroll through the different looks. I think these have been in the phone for ages. Um, so there's no surprises there. Just scroll through and see the one that fits what you're looking for. There we go, let's go for vivid warm. And then if you want to crop it, the crop tool is next to that and by default it's locked so the aspect ratio won't change as you make adjustments to it but you can unlock that and adjust it how you want or up at the top you've got the option to choose different um, dimensions so let's scroll through and find a let's go four by five there we go and if you want you can have that a landscape crop or a portrait crop there we go that's done so let's just save that one and remember the same as on the mac and the same as lightroom everything is non-destructive so if i want to undo all of these changes then i can do that's no problem so one of the best things about being in the apple ecosystem is that you've got icloud syncing so if your photos are on your phone, on your iPad, on your Mac, and they're all in the Photos app, making an adjustment on one will automatically make those changes on the other ones as well. So you can edit something on your phone and then switch over to your Mac and then everything will be, as you left it on your phone, ready to go with whatever you want to do next. So now if you want to carry on this on your Mac, you can always make some advanced adjustments. So have a look back at what else you can do on there. Otherwise, we can just share it from here. So this is ideal if you want to share it with a friend, put it directly onto social media, even send it in an email. Um, so let's do that now. So even if this was your uh, Nikon photos that you've taken and just imported onto your phone, it's a quick way to make quick edits to it and share them. So you don't actually have to have a computer in the mix to do this, but let's export this one. So we will go to the share menu in the bottom left hand corner that pops up with our list of options so we can airdrop it we can put it into Lightroom or Dehancer we can print it we can save the file whatever you want really the options are there for you to do whatever you want so it's nice and easy to send this off wherever you want to so the thing to remember that Apple Photos on your phone on your iPad is all about simplicity uh, but it is actually surprisingly powerful so if you want to do quick edits if you are away from your computer or just want to do like quick touch-ups on the go then it gets the job done really well if you want to learn how to go deeper with the apple photos app then check out the other videos that i've made in this series where we start on the mac and go from basics all the way through to some more advanced workflows and if it's helped, subscribe to see more of these. And of course, follow me on Instagram where you'll see the results from my editing and behind the scenes bits and pieces and things like that. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something here today and I will see you again next time on my photography journey. Have a great week. Bye.